We have seen many examples of uh, specification of the state of a system and there is something we find in common in all of these examples that is to say you need a certain uh, number of uh, quantum numbers in order to specify the state of the system. Uh, so, so the first thing I would like to note here is that uh, each uh, possible quantum state of a system can be specified by a set of f quantum numbers. So the number of quantum numbers we need to specify in order to uh, get the state of the system, f is called the number of uh, degrees of freedom of the system. Okay, so what is this number f for the examples that we have seen? Uh, so we have seen one example, ideal gas of capital N particles in a box. Okay, so ideal gas of capital N particles in a box. How many quantum numbers did we need in order to specify the state of the system? So for each particle, we need to give an uh, nix, niy, and niz for the ith particle. And for capital N particles, we need to give these uh, sets of three numbers n times. So f uh, for this case is equal to 3n. So that is this uh, set here we have to give uh, in order to get the quantum state. Now, uh, the other example we talked about is a quantum particle in a three-dimensional box. So we had one particle, one quantum particle in a three-dimensional box. So what did we have then? So we have to specify uh, the quantum numbers nx, ny, and nz in order to get the state of the system. Therefore, we have f is equal to 3. The number of degrees of freedom is 3. If you have a quantum particle in a one-dimensional box, then you have to specify only one quantum number, so f is equal to 1. The other example we talked about is uh, the spin system, ideal spin system, capital N uh, spins. There we had to specify the sigma value, sigma value being plus 1 for moment up and minus 1 for moment down, for capital N spins. So we have to specify capital N numbers. Therefore, the number of degrees of freedom would be capital N. <clears throat> Ideal N spin system. The number of degrees of freedom is uh, capital N. If this is a single spin, single spin, I need to specify the sigma value, so the number of degrees of freedom is 1. 
<clears throat> now, when I specify the uh, quantum state of the system, basically uh, I'm giving you the microscopic state of the system. So the microscopic state is basically determined by the quantum state let's call it quantum state R in which the system is found. Now uh, we have been talking about these ideal systems and we're ignoring any interactions between the particles uh, for example for capital N particles in the box we're neglecting interactions between spins etc. So if you have residual interactions uh, between the particles in the system uh, basically, uh, these uh, quantum states that we're obtaining uh, using this ideal uh, gas approximation or ideal spin approximation is approximate. So the residual interactions uh, basically interactions between these uh, gas particles, for example, interactions between spins, the magnetic fields that they apply to each other, uh, this is going to make determined quantum states approximate. All right. Now, uh, what is the effect of these residual interactions? So what can be uh, the outcome of uh, having a residual uh, interaction? Uh, so let's think about an example here. Uh, if you consider the quantum states in the hydrogen atom. So in the hydrogen atom, uh, we solve Schrodinger's equation using the Coulomb interaction. So we have the Coulomb uh, potential and the Coulomb potential is given by uh, K, uh, Q1, Q2 for two charges divided by the distance between them. K is Coulomb's constant. So this is uh, in between uh, the electrons and the nucleus in the case of the hydrogen atoms. So the proton in the nucleus. Uh, now, because these electrons will have residual interactions with also the surrounding electromagnetic field, this will lead to transitions between states. So you can have emission or absorption of photons. So if you think about these energy levels that you have determined by solving Schrodinger's equation, uh, your principal quantum number n equals 2 n equals 1 so you have uh, an electron that was residing in the level n equals 2 uh, this electron can leave this uh, state and move into the uh, n equals 1 state by emitting a photon h nu whose energy is equal to the energy difference between these two levels E2 minus E1. So this happens uh, due to residual interaction with electromagnetic fields, with external electromagnetic uh, fields. Okay, so that leads to emission or absorption of photons. So we can have, in this case, I'm showing you emission of a photon. We could also have um, also absorption of a photon is possible. This is going to be equal to the energy difference between these two states. So we don't talk about this interaction with the electromagnetic field while calculating the position of these uh, quantum states. 
the energy levels. Uh, we neglect any interactions between the uh, uh, electron and the surrounding electromagnetic fields. We obtain the quantum states, but the effect of the interaction with the external field uh, shows up in the transition of the electrons between these energy levels in the form of emission or absorption of photons. Another example you can think of is the uh, residual magnetic field between neighboring spins in a spin system. Uh, so as a second example we could give a magnetic field B between uh, neighboring spins. So this would be uh, for the spin system that we're considering uh, in a spin system. Okay, so just to recap here, uh, we are trying to specify the microscopic state of a system and the way we do that is by finding the quantum state in which the system resides and we find that there are there is a set of numbers we have to specify in order to um, to get the quantum state of the system this number is called the number of degrees of freedom f and in the examples we have gone through ideal gas of capital R n particles in a box you need three n quantum numbers for a, for example for an ideal n spin system you need n quantum numbers so that's the number of degrees of freedom um, so in calculating these uh, quantum states, we solve Schrodinger's equation uh, for quantum particles and uh, we neglect the interactions between particles or with the environment uh, and that basically gives us a set of energy levels and quantum states corresponding to those energy levels. Uh, however, we have residual interactions uh, with the uh, between the particles or with, uh, with the outside uh, external factors and so that makes our determination of the quantum states approximate. For example in the hydrogen atom in solving Schrodinger's equation we use the Coulomb potential between the electron and the nucleus and uh, we find the quantum states and the energy levels. However, when you have an interaction, residual interaction with an external electromagnetic field, that will lead to absorption or emission of a photon. And in the case of a spin system, we can talk about the residual magnetic field between neighboring spins that can affect the results of our uh, experiments.